Alright, so while Nintendo may have let us down with their Switch Pro offerings, it looks like Sony and Microsoft fans have got a reason to rejoice if this leak is legitimate. And man, if this leak is legitimate, man, like, I'm really looking forward to this, but it says here, Sony PlayStation 5 Pro targeting late 2023 to 2024 launch, pricing at around $600, Sony's evil number from the PS3 era, to $700, premium 8k gaming segment oh so it says here sony is also planning to refresh its own playstation 5 console with a pro variant that will now when i hear variant i think of you know covid and shit like that i just thought that like oh a variant oh no get that away from me i was like oh no it's a, it's a good thing that will tackle microsoft xbox series x and s refresh planned sometime around late 2023 to 2024 the new console would pack a new AMD SoC featuring higher performance, but being a pro console, Sony is very likely to position it at the premium 4K to 8K gaming segment. Let me open this as well, actually. The leak starts off by stating a few gaming announcements that we can expect at Sony's PlayStation Showcase event this week. The following titles may or may not be present, and the showcase has already happened, so it's kind of interesting to look into that, though. We did see God of War. We did see Gran Turismo. And I actually can't remember if we saw these three. Actually, I can't remember. Like, I kind of zoned out in the middle of the event. I'm not going to lie, but I know we saw these two, okay? Though no specifications were stated, it looks like the console will offer a decent boost in performance enough to entice those who waited for a proper generational upgrade over their PS4 Pro or older PS4 to make the jump. The PS5 Pro console is expected to launch in late 2023 to 2024 and will feature a price of around $600 to $700 US, which is around 75% higher than the base variant of the PlayStation 5. The original PS4 and PS4 Pro were priced at $399, while the Slim was $299. The increase in price is likely due to increasing manufacturing costs and what the company learned from its PS4 Pro launch. To make a profit off of the Pro, Sony will have to sell the console at a higher price to get its return, otherwise every unit they sell will be at a loss if the company plans to shift to a brand new SoC, which seems to be the case. Now this is where the speculation part begins. It is being stated that the PS5 Pro may get a new AMD APU featuring brand new CPU GPU IPs. Microsoft plans to refresh its Series S and Series X on 6 nanometers, allegedly, while Sony may be going the 5 nanometer route which is better by the way, the lower the better, with a new RDNA and Zen based architecture. If that's the case, then MLID speculates the TDP for the console to break past 300 watts, which makes it a very expensive console to design and manufacture. Also in gaming performance, the console might be utilizing AMD's FSR, Fidelity FX Super Resolution, which I think they spot wrong there. Technology and market itself as a 4K to 8K premium gaming console. All right, we're gonna take a look at the Microsoft one as well and then we can compare and then I can give my overall thoughts on these pro devices. It says here, Microsoft Xbox Series S refresh in 2022. Xbox Series X refresh in 2023 could utilize new six nanometer AMD APUs with faster clocks, more cores. So it seems like they're planning to refresh the Series S quicker than the Series X, which makes sense because the S is the weaker hardware. The leaker has posted a series, <laughs> get it? I see what you did there, a series? Of new info on next generation consoles from Sony and Microsoft in which he discusses what he has learned and what he believes are going to be the strategies adopted by both console makers for their refresh generation. According to MLID, Microsoft seems to be readying its refresh lineup starting with the Xbox Series X console first. This is being done to tackle the PS5 Slim, which is expected to launch around a similar time frame in late 2022. I wouldn't be surprised if the Slim has no disk drive, by the way. Like, I haven't actually looked into any Slim rumors, but my gut telling me the Slim is going to be a digital-only console. The Series S console is said to be a higher spec variant of the existing Series S console. The reason to get the new Series S console out so early is that Microsoft sees a higher attach rate to its Xbox Game Pass on the Series S compared to the Series X. Since the company allegedly operates the Xbox brand as a software as a service, which relies entirely on its past sales. They want more consumers to grab the Game Pass, and to do that, they want to release a new and better Xbox Series S, which will not only give new users an incentive to upgrade, but will also result in dropping the prices on the existing Xbox Series S to around 189 to 249 US dollars, which will drive in more users towards the Xbox platform, even if they use it as a secondary console. That's actually kind of interesting because they're getting so much Game Pass money. 
they're relying way more on software and it's like if they could even be a secondary console like people buy the ps5 for the exclusives which you kind of have to get like you want spider-man and now wolverine and shit like that ratchet and clan return like there's so many great exclusives coming to playstation 5 that if you want to play those you could then cop an xbox series s and game pass just to play your multiplats assuming you don't play pc gaming then you're good to go right I mean, that's kind of how nintendo always did it they were always like that console that you could get secondary and still be good you know you get your playstation or your xbox or your pc and then you get the nintendo system just to play the nintendo exclusives of course you, you need your mario kart right you need your shit you know what i mean like the rumor states that the new microsoft xbox series s is aiming at a price point of under 350 us dollars that would undercut the ps5 the new console could get a nice spec boost from the latest 6 nanometer amd apu which might unlock its full 24 cu rdna2 gpu the reason stated for disabling the cores in the first place is said to be early 7 nanometer yields but now that 7 nanometer is mature and 6 nanometer is more or less an optimized version of 7 nanometers we could see AMD ship out much faster APU designs that are unlocked and feature higher clock speeds. The existing Xbox Series S ships with 4 teraflops of compute power, so a 6 nanometer refresh may end with at least greater than 5 teraflops of compute power, which is over 25% greater. At under 350 US dollars, it would be a great gaming console choice and should give PS5 Slim a tough time. The Xbox Series X will also be getting a similar treatment with a 6 nanometer refresh planned for late 2023, though no word on the specifications or price is mentioned for the flagship SKU. Now before we fully discuss this, I just want to mention that when it comes to 8K gaming, even on PC, it's like a thing that basically doesn't exist, at least for modern day gaming, like not playing some 2003 game at 8K and saying, yeah, I'm gaming at 8K. With a 3090, people are struggling to game at native 8K. They said they were able to get playable frame rates on Doom Eternal and Forza Horizon 4, but most of these games they're using some form of DLSS, which is just basically smart upscaling with AI to get the game to run at a higher resolution, even though it's using a lower resolution to start with. I just wanted to get that out of the way before we talk about these consoles. So what do I think about this information? I think this is great news for both Sony and Microsoft fans who haven't been able to get a new console already, because quite frankly, if you missed the opportunity already, it might be worth waiting, you know? Like, I'm just saying, like, maybe you're in a hurry to play next gen, so you don't wanna wait, but if you can wait, it might be worth doing it just to get these 2023 systems and you know catch up on all the previous games with an 8k device i mean most people don't even have 4k yet like 4k tvs are finally starting to take off they're becoming way more affordable but 8k if these things are really targeting like 8k 60 most people aren't going to benefit from that to be honest even if you don't have an 8k tv i'm assuming that the 4k is going to be better as well like i have a ps5 i got it on launch day not trying to brag but you know like i had to stay up for it well i didn't stay i set an alarm but on the ps5 a lot of the games target 4k but they're using some form of smart upscaling so it's not really native 4k but it still looks good enough on a 4k tv or monitor i've got a 4k monitor and i can see that it looks pretty decent like spider-man remastered miles morales things like that but at the end of the day them pushing for 8k is pretty interesting you know if they can get 8k 60 that means we could be getting 4k 120 higher refresh rates things like that could be amazing for these systems and while 600 dollars may sound kind of expensive for a ps5 pro especially with what happened with the ps3's launch when you actually calculate for inflation 600 dollars in 2006 is like 812 dollars now which means it's going to be even more in 2023 so charging $600 for a PS5 Pro is not even that much if it really is an 8K system. Combined with the fact that they're probably going to be selling a regular PS5 as well at a lower price and a PS5 Slim at an even lower price, I think your entry point into the... What generation is this? 7th was PS3, 8th was PS4. Into the ninth generation is still going to be affordable, right? It's still, if you want to play those current gen games, you can still play them on a cheaper system. You can get your PS5 Slim and play them, or you can get your Microsoft system on the other hand and play them as well, because they're going to have their Series S and they're making a newer version. They're trying to target those lower prices as well. I'm assuming if they're doing a Series X as well, they're, they're probably going to have an AK system as well, because with these smart upscaling technologies, they can definitely now advertise these higher resolutions and get away with it, because now it's no longer the shitty checkerboarding that they had. Like, I had a PS4 Pro, and they were like, yeah, it's a 4K system. Uh, that shit was not 4K. They were using all sorts of tricks. And I mean, they're still using tricks now, but those tricks were worse. 
The shit looked blurry as fuck on a 4K monitor. I like it was it was a scam. Not not a scam. Like Sony fans don't come for me. It wasn't a scam, but like it just don't buy a PS4 Pro thinking you're gonna have some 4K experience on the majority of games. That's all I'm saying. But now with these actual better upscaling techniques like Fidelity FX. We're going to be seeing systems that actually do convincing 8K or higher refresh rate 4K. And it's just a good time to be a console fan because like in seventh generation of gaming, like console fans are really taking the copium, right? They were really convincing themselves that 30 FPS was enough and the human eye couldn't see more than 30 FPS. And PC users were just like rolling our eyes like, ugh, for fuck's sake, these console people, man. Like, and now that we finally get to a point where console games are running at 60 FPS more frequently than they used to in 7th gen. It's like, yeah, no one's going. Even the console fans don't want to play at 30 anymore. It's too low for them now. Except, you know, Nintendo fans, like, you know, people on Switch are like, 30 FPS is fine. It's it's handheld. It's on the go. And yeah, I mean, listen, at the end of the day, once the Steam Deck drops and that shit can do 60 FPS on things that the Switch can't, then even that's going to start to go away. And actually, that's a good point. Nintendo. They dropped the ball of their Switch Pro. It's just an OLED model, which I still copped. But my point is that the whole point is Nintendo was supposed to drop like some kind of Switch 2, maybe around that 2023, 2024 period, so they could get in to the next generation essentially and get, you know, weaker ports of whatever PS5 and Series X are getting. These rumors are looking promising, right? I mean, I don't really think it's too far fetched to think about it. Like, if they're doing a pro model, it has to target 8K because they're already selling the Series X and the PS5 as 4K systems. They're using smart upscaling, but it's still being sold as a 4K system. They want you to get a 4K TV. The UIs are now fully 4K. It's like, what could the pro do to really warrant you getting it? Oh, it's 4K, but slightly higher frame rate, but we're going to charge $600, $700. It has to be like, we're pushing for the 8 now. We're pushing for the 8, or you can stay on 4 and get some serious frame rate bump but we're pushing for the 8 so i'm definitely looking forward to seeing more on this if it really is that good then i could sell my ps5 and get a pro but i mean that's like three years from now so i'm not really holding my breath right now but i'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on this but yeah let me know what you guys think about all of this we are looking at rumors and leaks for the ps5 pro and the xbox series x p i don't know what to call it and the series s refresh and it's looking like at least not for the S, but for the others, AK is looking like a thing they're trying to target, even if they're using smart upscaling. Are you guys interested in these products? Are you going to be going for the 8K Pro models? Are you going to just get the base models when they become cheaper when the Pro models come out? Or are you going to get the Series S refresh or the original Series S? But either way, this is only a good thing for gaming, right? If you want the latest and greatest, you can get that. If you want something cheap, you can get that too. Everyone wins, right? Be yeah, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell. More content coming soon to the channel. But it is your boy, Rem. Remulus. Rem Gang. And I'm out.